Come see a child of low estate in manger bed reclining. Yet on his humble dwelling place, bright stars in heaven are shining. This little babe is Christ the Lord. Whom saints have long expected For many come to live and die Despised, betrayed, rejected For many come to rend the veil Which hides death's gloomy go on with the next thing. There's the, there's the sound. Good morning. It's, uh, it's good to be with you. This is the first Sunday of Christmas. The, the world goes on to the next thing, but we, we remain here in the season of Christmas for, the, for these 12 days and celebrate Jesus' birth with our world. So really excited uh, this morning to tell you that um, one of our own, Justin Smith, uh, engineer here in our community and member of the church, who's in process of becoming a deacon in the Anglican Church, is going to be our preacher this morning. So pray for Justin and, uh, and pray for his family who are all homesick. 
So um, this is, welcome to ordained ministry. This is the way it works. Um, the, the enemy attacks, you know, but God prevails. Greater is he that is in us. So, but excited to be with you this morning. So we're going to stand to begin our, uh, so because it is the season of Christmas for 12 days, we're going to continue with Christmas carols and Christmas themed songs. And, uh, and our church continues to be beautiful with the poinsettias and, uh, and all the altar guilt's work to make us look beautiful for Christmas Eve. I forgot to say that on Christmas Eve, so let me just thank the altar guild for their faithful work week in and week out. So let's stand as we begin our service with our processional. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's sing together the Gloria. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light kindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For the reading of God's holy word, our children are going to head out to Children's Church. Let's say a prayer of blessing over them. So, Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom to train them 
that they may love all that is true and pure and lovely and of good report, following the example of their Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. First lesson is from Isaiah, chapter Beginning with verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Let me invite you to stand as we respond to the first lesson with our psalm reading from Psalm 147. We'll read verses 12 to 20. I'll read to the asterisk, ask you to respond with the remainder of the verse. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O God. For he has made strong the bars of your gates. And has the children he makes peace in your borders. He sends forth his commandment upon the earth. And his word comes very quickly. He gives snow like wool. And scatters the white like ashes. He casts forth his ice like crumbs. He gives the to the fire He sends out his word and melts them. He declares his word unto Jacob. He has not dealt so with other nations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated for the second lesson. Second lesson is from Galatians chapter 3 beginning with verse 23. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, 
We are no longer under a guardian, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything, but he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Well, let's stand now and let's sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, John the Baptist. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord, please send your Holy Spirit. Lead us into your truth. May my words be your words. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to start by rereading several of the verses from our gospel passage. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then skipping to 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth. There are a couple of ideas I'd like to dive into about these several verses I just reread. The first of these is just this concept of the word becoming flesh of Christ coming down to earth and being incarnate in the form of man. So what has happened here is a portion of the Godhead has come down and become a part of his creation. In Father Alex's uh, sermon on Christmas Eve, he had the benefit of one of his grandchildren here, Rich, who he came down and brought over and lifted up and gave an awesome example of kind of the helplessness and the humility that it takes for you know, Jesus to come down and take on the form of man. I think as humans, it's hard for us to grasp the idea of God becoming a portion of his creation. And so um, rather than a child, I have here a vacuum robot. Um, It's certainly not as cute as a child and not as appealing, but I believe it illustrates a point We as humans have created vacuum robots. And they do, this one, at least in particular, uh, does a pretty good job in my home. Um, iRobot is not a sponsor of this sermon. (laughs) But to encounter the world as this robot encounters the world really represents a, a huge limitation on just existence in general. I think this thing doesn't even understand three-dimensional space completely. Um, It's it's like a quasi two-dimensional. But it's just, it's it's amazing to think of the idea of Christ coming down and becoming a portion of his creation. And so I just wanted to tease that out a little bit more. And 
And then the other thing I wanted to talk about more is this idea of Jesus as the word of God. What does that mean? I mean, there's a lot going on in these first several verses. Um, God, the word is with God. The word is God. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the light. The light has come into the world. Um, and there's just, there's kind of a lot of moving parts. My understanding is the Greek word logos refers to both the spoken and unspoken word. It is the reason of God. So Christ has taken on and represents the reason of God. And there's kind of, there's two aspects of this word logos and, and the reason of God. And one is the creative word of God. And the other is the governing or the law of God. And so in terms of the creative word of God, just the terminology in the beginning is meant to remind the reader of creation, the creation story going back to the very beginning where um, unlike other creation narratives, God just speaks and things come into existence. Um, one of my favorite portions of the Chronicles of Narnia is the account and the magician's nephew. Um, the main characters, Diggory and Polly, they kind of stumble back and they arrive in Narnia through a very convoluted chain of events at the very beginning, at its inception. And there's just this wide and empty and, and formless land that's there and everything is pitch black. And there's just, all of a sudden in the silence, they're singing. And Aslan in the story is just walking through the land, kind of slowly revolving and singing everything into, in, into existence. And it's just this amazing visual imagery. Um, the other thing about the creative word of God is it's in the Christmas season, it's easy for us to focus on Christ's birth, that Christ has come to earth. And at least for me, I don't know about for everybody else, but it's, it's easy to think of Christ as kind of coming into being in Christmas when that is absolutely not the case. I mean, Christ is co-eternal and has been here all along and was, at, was with God at the very beginning the other idea about the word logos, the governing word of God and the law, is that um, there's the idea that's presented with the Mosaic law um, in Deuteronomy 32, where the law represents the inheritance of life to Israel. In obedience to the law, the Israelites are, are given the opportunity to enter into the life of God in Deuteronomy 32, verse 45, it says, And when Moses had finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words by which I am warning you today, that you may command them to your children, that they may be careful to do all the words of this law. For it is no empty word for you, but your very life. And by this word... You shall live long in the land that you are going over, the Jordan to possess. This aspect of, of Jesus being the fulfillment of this word is, is confirmed in Matthew 5, 17, where Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So Christ, the living word of God, who represents you know, the creative aspects of God, but also the governing a law of God and, and the, the law itself. Um, he, he's come, he's you know, taken on the form of a child, um, and, and he's present with us. Um, then finally, Jesus as the living word of God is powerful. In Philippians 2, verse 4, it says, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name 
so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When I was a teenager, I had a nightmare and in the nightmare I was choking and I woke up choking. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen horror movies where you just feel this kind of gut, um, gut fear inside you. But that's probably the easiest way to compare the, the fear I was feeling at the time when I woke up. And in the midst of my choking, I looked down and at the foot of my bed was a demon. And all I could think to say was Jesus. And I said it you know, like in between gasps. And I said it again, but the second time more clearly, and the demon walked through the door and left the room. The name of Jesus is powerful. Considering the power of Jesus, considering the power of his word, my proposal for us as we move into 2022 is to honor Christ, the living word, with our words. And I would propose we do this in three ways. So here's the application of my first sermon. <laughs> Number one, speak the name of Jesus. Work it into our conversations. We live in a time with COVID where death and sickness is on everyone's mind. And when death is on everyone's mind, the question of, well, what happens after death is also on everybody's mind. So it's, it's like one step away from talking about COVID to talking about Jesus. You know, here's a reason for the hope that I have. Christ came to bring life and to give it and give it abundantly. You know, I don't know how I would make it through this season of life if it weren't for the hope that I have in Christ. Um, I had a friend who asked me about giving to the homeless recently. And what I told her was that give openly, but work the name of Jesus into that conversation. Um, homelessness is a very complex thing, but one thing I think that um, can easily be agreed upon is the homeless need Jesus. And it can open up an opportunity to talk more. You know, if you bring Christ in that conversation, the name of Jesus is powerful and opens doors to speak into people's lives. Second thing, let us edify and build up our neighbor with our words. It is popular these days to tear people down. People who have differences of opinion, people who don't see eye to eye. I mean, COVID protocol, for goodness sake. I mean, there's probably people who see me wearing these, this double mask right now who's like, ah, that's not really necessary. There's other people who, if I took my mask off right now, they'd be scared to death. But we're called to love our neighbor regardless of where we fall on the spectrum of belief with regards to COVID and, and everything in general. Tearing people down is popular. Let us build others up. Romans 15, verse 1, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let us, each of us, please his neighbor for his good to build him up. Proverbs 12, 18. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Does anybody feel recently like they're having a sword thrust into them? It sure feels that way to me sometimes. Proverbs 15, 4. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness, and it breaks the spirit. Finally, let us be slow to speak and speak sparingly. James chapter 1, verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce 
the righteousness of God. Almost every time I'm quick to speak, I'm quick to retort, I'm quick to respond, I'm not saying kind things, and I'm not building people up. Proverbs 29, 20, do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There's more hope for a fool than for him. Proverbs 10, 19, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. And then Matthew 6, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. That being said, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we continue to meditate and worship the living God who's made himself incarnate in the person of Jesus, let's stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, with Father. Through Him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. We invite you to kneel for the prayers of the people. Prayers of the people are for all God's people to pray earnestly, to plead before our Heavenly Father with our whole heart, soul, and mind. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. 
for Foley, our Archbishop, and Neil, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will preach the gospel, care for your people, equip us for ministry, and lead us forth in fulfillment of the Great Commission through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, we pray especially for our mission partner, the Bishop Ochil Salome Trust. We also pray for the least reached people groups of the world, especially the Iraqi Arabs of North Africa and the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, especially in Somalia, we pray you would give them strength in their time of trouble. We also pray for those who persecute your people. Forgive them and turn their hearts toward you through the faithful witness of those they persecute. For our nation and for all in authority, especially our president, our Congress, and our courts, may they administer justice, govern wisely, and strive for the welfare and peace of the whole world. We also pray for first responders, relief workers, and those in the armed forces connected to our parish. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Father, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially during this season of Christmas. May you comfort them, Lord, in their, their grief, their loss. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, praying you would grant us grace to follow their good examples that with them we might partake in your heavenly kingdom. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Father, we give thanks for the life of Desmond Tutu, former Archbishop of South Africa in the Anglican Church. We give you, we ask that you would comfort his family, Lord, in his death. We pray, Father, that as he was an example, that we too might be instruments of your peace that we might seek to understand what truth and reconciliation really mean. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The peace of our Lord be always with you. Let me invite you to stand. The wave of peace to those who are with us today. God's peace. And you may have a seat. Well, I was not near that smooth the first time I gave a sermon. So thank you, Justin, for a wonderful word from the Lord today. So I'm uh, uh, just excited to, to, to tell you that uh, Justin's in-laws are with him here in the back there. So we're glad to have them. Nikki's folks, so wait, welcome. And others may be visiting with us, or you may be new to servants and have not yet connected with us. There's a card in the rack in front of you that has information you can put on it. And if you're watching online, there's a digital version of that Connect card. We'd love to connect with you and find out how we can um, get to know you and minister to you and your family. But we are glad you're here today. A couple of announcements. Uh, just a reminder, especially this time of giving, there's lots of ways that we can give uh, to those that we can learn to speak the name of Jesus both in word and in deed. One is to uh, volunteer over at Littlewood, our, our, our partner school, Littlewood Elementary. There's going to be a training on Epiphany on the 6th of January at 3 p.m. on Zoom. And Blakely Porter, who's new to servants, is going to be in instructing people on how they can mentor and do um, tutoring and be a, a resource person in the community for uh, Littlewood School. So we invite you to, to tune in on the, on the 6th at 3 p.m. for that with Blakely, and Blakely's information is in the bulletin and the online bulletin. Also, this time of the year, we try to raise funds for Bishop Ochil and his ministry to uh, uh, the Sloan Trust, which sponsors uh, college students, used to sponsor secondary students, but now that's provided for, so now it sponsors college and graduate students. If you don't know, the way out of poverty is through education, and we are, we are helping to educate well over 200 now students that we've educated um, and helped them break the cycle of poverty in one of the poorest areas of Kenya, in very western Kenya. So, In addition, I wanted just to remind you that um, isn't it beautiful to have all these lovely poinsettias? We'll keep them up to the season of Christmas and of course at Easter lilies at, at, at Easter, but other times of the year we don't have flowers. And one of the folks that's new to servants, Darden Pyron back there in the bow tie, 
at Darden is, is graciously stepped forward to say that he would be willing to lead a flower ministry so that as people want to uh, give money to, for memorials or in remembrance of, of folks that, uh, or just to honor a special occasion that you can, you can give to flowers and we would actually be able to have live flowers in our services. So if you're interested in that ministry, please see Darden or call the church office and we'd love to, to talk to you more about that. And then in the new year, we're going to begin a, a, a deeper study at our house, at, at my house, um, talking about uh, early church history, talking about um, issues of theology and, and understanding, sort of taking a deep dive in some of the things. And so if, if a, a deeper study of theology and philosophy and church history is of interest to you, please see me after the service. Or you can also speak to Darden, because Darden's going to be a part of that as well. So we'd love to tell more. Next week, Darden will be giving an announcement about that. So, Well, now we come to the time of Holy Communion. Reminder that this is not an Anglican table. This is the Lord's table. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings. Come into his courts with praise.
Please stand. Blessed be the Lord our God, the Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, his mother, was made truly man yet without the stain of sin, so that, he might be cl- we, that we might be cleansed from sin and be given the right to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood 
of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection to your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace.
praise to Thee, eternal Lord, who wore the God of flesh and blood, and chose a manger for Thy throne, while worlds on worlds were Thine out with our recessional this morning so but we do ask that as you move around that you do wear mask until you get outside so thank you let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your son our Savior Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for our...
recessional song. Problems, we send to the cross of Christ. All of our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. And all of our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. Go forth in love. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Have a blessed afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas season. Arise and look to the skies. The morning trumpet sounds. Parched in the desert we lie Flowers now spring from the ground Every nation shall see Every nation shall see God's glory as the light descends God's glory as the light descends Hail to Lord of light, who makes the sun a new blade, long away the child thou guide, be our everlasting flame, Jesus light of the world.